I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some very special people in the house. Would you like to share some information that you may have with us this morning? On behalf of the Friendship family, we welcome you this morning. We say thank you for coming to worship with us. We are pleased by your, blessed by your presence here this morning. We know there are many other churches that you could have chose to worship, but you, you chose to join with us in that. We say thank you and have a blessed week. Good morning. Good morning. I'm reading from the King James Version, uh, Psalms 25, 1 through 12. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. All right, all right. Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O oh Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever too old. Re remember not the sins of my youth, oh, what you say. nor my transgression. According to thy mercy, remember thou me, for thy goodness sake, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will I teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the path of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O oh Lord, pardon my iniquities, for they are great. Last verse. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Amen. May the Lord forever bless the reading and the book of the Bible. And I thank God today for my birthday, which is 80 years old. Amen. Ain't God good? Ain't God, oh Lord, hallelujah. I told you, I feel like taking a back of flip, flip off this poop. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it though. Y'all might have to call 911 on me. God bless you. Good morning. I'll be reading to you this morning uh, 1 Timothy, the third chapter. No, the fourth chapter, 1 through 16 in its entirety. For your hearing, the word says, but the Spirit explicitly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of the hypocrisy and lawyers seared in their own conscience with a braiding iron. Men who forbid marriage and advocate abstain from, from food which God has created to be gratefully shared in by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good. 
and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. For it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. And pointing out these things to the brethren, you will be good servants of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound doctrine which you have been following, but have nothing to do with worldly fable fit only for old women. Mm. On the other hand, disciple your, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godly is profitable for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. For it is for this we labor and strive, because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially of believers. Prescribe these teach, prescribe and teach these things let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was restored on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the Presbyterian. Take pain with these things we absorb in them so that your progress will be evidence to all. Last verse reads, pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching, preserving these things. For as you do these things, no, as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. God's word for God's people. Father, oh most gracious God, we said thank you this morning. Father, We stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. And if thou withdraw thyself from us, oh, oh, most gracious Father, tell us where, oh, whether shall we go? Father, first of all, we want to say thank you. And we praise you. We give you all the glory for all good things. Father, we thank you for our shepherd being. We thank you for keeping him and strengthening his body to have him present in the room today is a blessing. We thank you for our intern, Pastor. Pastor Burns, Lord, we ask you to keep him. Oh, mighty God. Uh, the need is very much today. And we thank you for Jesus. Because he said if we ask anything, anything in his name, it shall be given unto us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells us. And right now, Lord, uh, we come, you heard the many requests, a child that's in the hospital. Man say they don't know, but Lord, you are the answer. We say, heal, if it be your will, that child. And get a family strength. Young man stood up back there and said, uh, his wife, is having some problems. We ask in Jesus' name that whatever the problems are, we know you're able. We know you can do it. We know a lady that was sick for 12 years and 
She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she knew she'd be made whole. You're the same God today as you were back then. Glad we heard about the bereaved family this morning. Brother Carver Bajo and his family. We come on their behalf also when we ask you to strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we come uh, this morning and asking you for the ones that are at home that couldn't get here today. We lift them up to you. We got some in the hospital, uh, Brother Bar Barnes. We lift them up to you right now. And we thank you, Lord, that you're able to do all things. Lord, uh, we pray for everything that's going on in the White House. And all the way down to this little courthouse we serve down here. Lord, uh, we come on behalf of those who are in bereavement because a loved one has moved on. Lord, we ask you for that strength today. Give us strength, Lord, that we can go through this thing. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we pray for the husbands and the wives that need your help because world is getting wicked today. Children don't want to hear their parents. School's teaching them how to do this and how to do that. Not allowing us to chastise our own kids. We come against that with your authority, Lord. Because you said in your word to spare the rod could spoil that child. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for the preacher man today that's going to preach the word. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would give him a fresh anointing. Let him preach like never before. We say thank you. We thank you for our musicians. We thank you for our songsters today. We ask you, Lord, let them sing with the power from on high. Oh, God, you said we just ask. If we just ask in your son Jesus' name, it shall be given unto us. Lord, we see that we got floods all over the country. We got droughts over the country. You already know, Lord, they said there's water storm coming in over Texas, maybe today or tomorrow. You're in charge, Lord. We say what the devil means for bad, Lord, you'll make it good. I know a man that called Job says, though he slay me, yet would I trust in him. Teach us to trust in you, Lord. One writer says, but they didn't wait up on the Lord. Teach us to wait where our strength will be renewed. Oh, Lord, I know uh, I got to sit down. But, Lord, these prayers and these blessings, if I didn't call someone's name, Lord, you already know it. You already know the families that's in grief and bereavement and you know the ones that have heart trouble. You know the ones that have back trouble. You know about our Pastor Griffin, Lord. We lift him up in his family. He has a mother 90 years old, Lord, and she's going through trials, so we lift her up too. Oh, mighty God. As Abraham said, Lord, please don't pass us by. Lord, we're here at Friendship. We stand and believe in your word. And for many years, the word has been preached that way. 
And we pray that it continue to be preached. That you will never leave us. And you will never forsake us. And we say thank you. Because you said your yoke is easy. And your burden is light, Lord. So now, Lord, I reach my hands to heaven. Not only here, Lord, but all over this country. We ask you, Lord, uh, in the name of your dear son, Jesus, that you bless the needy. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. For thine art the kingdom, Lord, and the power and the glory. And we said not just for a little while, but we said forever. Forever. What? We say amen. And amen. Somebody say thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you.
Amen. Let's hear it again for our music team. They Amen. awesome. They, they come with it every Sunday. Uh, let me take a few minutes to, where's my Aaliyah, Suri, and Michaela? They up in the, up there. I, I just want to say thank you and let you know how much we appreciate you, young people who serve in the Lord and come here gladly and boldly and come in and turn on the screens and bring down the microphones and don't mind serving the Lord. Amen. We salute you Amen. and we praise you and we're happy for your presence, all right? Thank you. There's a word in the book of Romans, chapter number six. What I've learned to do and learning to do is usually I have a uh, something in the bulletin with the scripture, but I have to learn as Reverend Gavin say, I'm just a server. The Lord is the master chef. He makes the menu. And so I have to watch and see what he puts on the menu and act accordingly. So Amen. early one morning, I get Romans 6 verses 14 through 20. Now we'll see what happens with that. Lord, will be done. We'll start at verse number 12. It says, do not let sin control the way you live. All right, all right. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, or but, Amen. give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. All right, all right. Sin is no longer your master for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose, my word might, to obey? Right. You can be a slave to sin which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God which leads to righteous living. Thank God once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey his teachings, his teachings we have given you. All right, all right. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to the righteous, to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I'm using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now, you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the results? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. 
for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. If I would attach a subject to this word, it would be payday. All right now. Payday. Payday is coming. We spend our whole life, practically our whole life, running behind a paycheck, trying to make sure that we have the significant funds or means to do or live the way that we want to live. We spend hours working only to get a check to pay a bill and use it all up. We spend hours getting ourselves prepared or ready to go to work. And at the end of the day, we expect a reward. All right, all right. At the end of the day, we expect to be paid for our services. Amen, that's right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. If we worked eight hours <laughs> and the boss man came out, Yuli, and told us, told you you weren't getting paid today, your lip would be hitting the floor. And you'd probably also be hitting the man who's bringing the message. What do you mean I'm not getting paid today? Didn't I work for my money? I earned that. You can't hold that from me. I spend eight hours in this place working, trying to make provisions for my family. What do you mean I'm not getting paid for working today? It would be to our benefit if we put that much effort and energy in our spiritual payday. How is it that our Spiritual well-being mm -hmm. is not as important as our physical or fleshly well-being. Paul is writing this letter to the Romans, people he haven't really met face to face. And let me remind you, this is not a chapter book. This is a letter. And in a letter, there's a certain parts to it. Yeah, yeah. He starts off by introducing himself. This letter coming from a person who was a persecutor of the church. That's right. All right, all right. This person who had nothing good to say about the church. All right. Oh, yeah. This person writing this letter who had to get not off of a horse and meet with Jesus face to face. Now writing the letter to the very people that he was persecuting. How am I going to take it? So as he introduces himself, he wants them to understand who he is. All right, all right. So in order for me to get to chapter six, I want to take us to chapter one at the beginning of the letter All right. and walk us to chapter six. You never start a letter in the middle because then you don't know what they said in the beginning. There's no understanding. So let me take a few minutes to walk you through Paul's introduction. In Romans chapter one, so walk with me. He says some key things. In Romans 1, verse 5, he says, Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell the Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them. 
so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. So immediately he starts off with the word obedience and God giving him the authority to do what it is that he's doing. They said something in Sunday school this morning about, Sherry said that it's all our responsibility uh, to carry the word of God. Uh-huh. So somewhere it got lost that it's the preacher's responsibility to give the word and carry the word and share the word. No, it's all of our responsibility. Right. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 say, go ye therefore. therefore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ye therefore. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. Teaching and observing. So we all share in the responsibility of getting the message of the gospel of God out to everyone. So Paul wanted to get that across. Then secondly, he wanted them to know that if they were going to be successful, then they need to learn how to obey the word of God. I don't know how many times that you've heard me say obedience is the key to everything. If we can't obey God, then we're not going to find any success in our relationship with God. So what we have to do is learn how to obey. And then Paul says this to them. He wants them to know that he has authority. And then he says this in verse 16, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the good news of Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. So Paul wanted to know that It's the gospel that's going to make them righteous and how they should be living according to the word. Then in chapter 2, verse 10, he says this. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good. First the Jews. First Jew first, and also the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. All right. I'm glad about that. Right. Me too. Reverend. I, 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 I don't want to put my, my, my salvation in the hands of the wrong people. I want to be under the, the realm of a God that shows no favoritism. As long as I'm obeying and doing his will, Amen. that he's going to be fair with me, all right, all right. that he's going to be faithful uh-huh. to me. Mm-hmm. And in the midst of my pain, I know that God is going to be there. Yes, will. In the midst of my trouble, I, I know that God is going to be there. In the midst of my hurt, yeah. I know that God is going to be there. So I want to serve a God that shows no favoritism, that knows that if I'm going through, that I'm not going through alone, that he is going to go through it with me, Sister Doris, no matter what I'm going through. Amen. Amen. Because he's a God that's faithful and has no favorites. Then in verse 13 of chapter 2, he goes on. And he says, for merely listening to the law doesn't make us right with God. It is obeying the law that makes us right in his sight. Let me share with you something that you might already know. The devil knows the Bible. Well. We can walk and talk and do all the things and see all the things. We know all the catchphrases and buzzwords, but until we are living those words, then they're meaningless. 
We got to live out Christ's words. Then in verse 16 of chapter 2, I'm going to walk us through to chapters, so bear with me. Amen. I'm not rushing. He says, and, and this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming. Listen to this. It's Paul's writing, and he said, and this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming when God, through Christ Jesus, will judge everyone's secret life. Talk about that darkness this morning. All right. <laughs> and darkness comprehends it not. God is going to judge us all. Hear what I'm saying? God is going to have, is going to judge us all. It's where are we going to be when judgment day comes? Are we living according to what God says or ordains us to do? Or are we doing what we want to do and hoping that it will be okay? Paul asked a simple question. Do we keep on sinning? And the reply was, of course not. Well, I, I try, Brother Ken, but... I just can't seem to do it right. Uh, sometimes you got to get away from what you've been doing by getting away from some people you've been hanging with. All right, all right, chicken. Sometimes you got to step back and take a good look. And you got to make a decision for yourself is what you want to do and how you want to do it. Do I want to be with God? Or do I want to burn in hell? Your choice. That's why God gave us free will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have decisions to make. Then in verse 29, he said this. He says, oh, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. Well, we got to make sure that our heart is right with God. We say our heart is right with God, but is it really? Are we loving? Are we nurturing? Are we caring? If we are going to do what needs to be done, then our heart needs to be fixed on God. Then Paul, as he moves through this letter in, in chapter three, again, this is not a chapter book, but it's a letter. In this letter to the Romans, in chapter 3, in verse 4, he says this. Of verse 3 and 4. True, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they were unfaithful, does that mean that God would be unfaithful? Of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar, God is true as the scripture says about him. And then he goes down and, and lets you know that all people are sinners. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 9, uh, verse 9, he says, well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? Not at all. Mm -hmm. For we all have already shown that all people, whether Jew or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. No one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. Not a single one. Yeah, yeah, all right. Their talk is foul like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear at all for God. All right. Amen. Amen. Bible says fear is the beginning of wisdom. 
In my day, that was prevalent. You feared the Lord. Your parents made sure that you feared the Lord in a good way. Knowing that if you didn't do the things right and accordingly, that there was going to be a consequence. I stopped by today to tell you that if we don't get it right, expect to be a consequence. For every reaction, a very action, there is a reaction. And Adam found God's reaction to his action of disobedience. He put us all under sin. Shall we keep on sinning? Well, I'm Ken, I'm I'm just flesh. That's just my nature. But it's not God's nature. Our opportunity, our obligation is to become more like Christ. To live like Christ. We have that obligation. But let me keep moving. So he moves on in his letter in chapter 4. I'm almost to 6. In verse 5 he says this. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God. That was another key point that Paul wanted to instill to them. Faith. Hebrews 11 says, faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So in spite of everything, it has a start with a belief in Christ. Uh A belief that Christ is able to do that all that his word says that he's able to do. A faith that is unwavering. A faith that holds on tightly to knowing that when I'm struggling with something that, that Christ will be there. A faith like this woman who said that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, that I'll be made whole. A faith that would take men to, to climb a roof and dig the hole, a hole in the roof to lower man down to Christ so that Christ could heal him. A faith that gave a man the ability to get up out of a bed and walk. A faith that gave Jesus Christ the energy to take two fish and five loaves and feed 5,000. A faith that that made a blind man see. A faith that made the lame to walk. A faith that is unshakable and unmovable. A faith that I can hold on to and grasp and say, thank you, God, for being there for me. A faith that keeps us moving. A faith that keeps us going. So you got to learn to hold on to God's unchanging hands. Trouble's going to come. It's not when it's coming or if it's coming. Trouble's coming. Death is coming. But if I have a faith that I can hold on to, that's unshakable and unmovable, then I have solid ground to stand on. I have a hope in a Christ that died for me. Faith. Paul wanted them to understand that they needed faith. They needed to be obedient and they needed to have faith. Right. Amen. So in verse 16 of this chapter, as we talk about chapter 4, he says, so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift and we are certain to receive it whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham, yeah, yeah. for Abraham is the father of all who believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is what the scripture mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who create things out of nothing. Even there was no reason for hope. Abraham kept hoping. He kept believing that 
would become the father, that he would become the father of many nations. Yeah, yeah. Then as we move through this letter, in chapter five, verse one and two, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Let me give you a warning. People are going to tell you what you can't do. People are going to tell you about all the gloom and doom that this world has to offer. But I offer you today a, a Christ that's, that's faithful. I offer to you today a, a Christ that has all power yeah, yeah. in his hand. Right. I offer to you today a Christ who, with a word, spoke a world into his existence. Mm -hmm. I offer you today a Christ that has all power in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. I offer you to, to you today a Christ who, who loved you so much that he died for you. I, I, I don't know anybody out there that, I, if you think you'll die for me, raise your hand. I, I, I don't see no hands going up, so I, don't, I, I guess you, you die for me. Charles got his hand up. <laughs> so, we have to understand that we have an obligation. And we serve a God that is obligated to us. You have to understand the power that you possess. Yeah, yeah. The family that you are a part of. Yeah, yeah. You possess power that is limitless. All you need to do is believe in God. And hold to his hand. First yeah, yeah. 7 and 10 in chapter 5 gives us these words. As we move through this letter to chapter 6. 7 through 10 say, now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. So there is a payday that's already come. And because of that payday, we have the right to the tree of life. Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And sin has left stain. But he washed it. He washed it. White as snow. How did that happen? Well, the Bible story of the gospel of the good news says that one day on a hill called Calvary, Jesus picked up an old rugged cross. And on that cross, he raised him up. And he put nails into his hands and nails into his feet. He took my sins, the took your sins and he placed those sins up upon the cross and, and he died. Yes, he was buried. But the Bible says that on the third day yes, 
He got up with all power in his hand. Power to make me walk right. Power to make me talk right. Power to make me love right. You have power unlimited. If you just hold on to God's unchanging hands. Payday is coming. Payday is coming. Payday is coming. Will you be ready? Payday is coming. Jesus has left us a charge key. We got to follow that charge. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Be ready for the payday. It's not by what I did that's making me so special. It's by God's grace that makes me special. Because the Bible says his grace is sufficient. So hold on to that. Knowing that God is alive. We're not serving a dead God. We're serving a, a risen God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That had the power to get up again. So expect a payday and know that payday is coming. Good morning, friendship. You can now give your tithes and offerings electronically through a link on the internet, a text to give number, or through a mobile app called Give Plus. Now for those who are comfortable giving in the old school way of writing a check or money order, you can still do that by sending a check payable to Friendship Baptist Church at the address listed on screen. But for those who would like to use a safe mobile app, a secure web link, or to easily send a text to give your tithes and offerings, this system is now available. For more information, please view the videos that follow or click the link below to send an offering online. In today's fast moving world, smartphones are integrated into our lives. We bank and shop on our smartphones, and many of us want to give with them too. Giving to the church with a text message is fast, easy, and versatile. With Give Plus Text, you can make a weekly offering or respond to a special appeal in just seconds. To give, you enter the church's 10-digit Give Plus Text number and the amount you wish to donate. Then, send your text. The first time you contribute with Give Plus Text, you'll receive a secure registration link. Click the link to go to our secure website where you'll enter your contact and payment information. Tap Process when you're done. After you've completed your registration, a text reply will verify that your gift has been received. We'll also email you a receipt. For future giving, you simply send a text with the amount you wish to give and it will process automatically. You can also choose to make your gift recurring. Give Plus Text is that easy. Register, give, repeat. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Text and the other electronic giving options we offer.